All right. So hi everyone, uh, good morning and good evening, uh, wherever you are now. My name is Isabella. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're very excited to showcase our boarding program at Carmel Catholic High School today and share some insightful college application tips from our current seniors at Carmel. So today's uh, virtual event will include three parts. We're gonna start with the guest speak introduction uh, and we will move to the college preparation part after we finish the guest speak introduction. If you have any questions, feel free to type in the chat box or submit it uh, when we move to the Q&A part, which will be the last part. So without further ado, I wanna give the stage to our guest speakers, Isabella and Zina. Can you guys introduce yourself first? Uh, Isabella, do you wanna go first? Sure. Um, hi everyone, my name is Isabel Pagano. I am one of uh, many seniors at Carmel High Catholic High School. Um, among my roles at the school, I am co-captain of Scholastic Bowl, which is sort of a trivia-based team and the math team. I am also co-president of the Science National Honor Society and the Spanish National Honor Society. I am a co-founder of the Femin STEM Club at Carmel, which focuses on getting more girls involved in STEM. I am a member of the build team on Carmel's robotics team, Not Your Average Nerds, which recently was one of the three teams to win state in Illinois. I am also one of the senior editors for Carmel Crossroads, our student run newspaper, and I'm a student ambassador for Amerigo Education. I was admitted to Caltech and Northwestern, and I had a 36 ACT and a 1580 on my SAT. Thank you, Isabella. Um... Zena, you want to go next? Great. Hi, my name is Zena. I'm a senior at Carmel. I'm a member of Youth in Government, which is a mock trial sort of government. Um, we work at the state level of Illinois, and we get to go to Springfield at the end of our um, year, basically, in March. And I was a committee chair for Youth in Government, as well as a legislator, so I got to make like a mock bill. And I also got to like run committee sessions um, I'm also a member of CDN, which is the Carmel Digital Network, and there I host shows and write the scripts for our shows, which just involves broadcasting like student news and information for students to know, but also like um, like the current news besides just our school. I'm also a writer at Carmel Crossroads, which I really enjoy. Um, I participated in track for two years, and that's basically running, and I did mainly sprinting which was like the 100 and 200. Um, in 2020, I created a book drive for kids in Nigeria because I am Nigerian. And so I decided to tr sort of do something that would help nurture students' education and just their learning in general. Yeah. Yeah. Also, Zina is admitted to University of Chicago and she's planning to um, major in biology and the political, political science. So just so everyone know. So college prep can be very daunting and challenging and also intimidating, uh, especially for a lot of the younger students. Um, I assume we have some attendees who might be um, at eighth grade and looking for a high school, or maybe who's finishing their high school in their country and looking for trans um, transferring to a high school in the USA, right? So if you follow the news about college admissions and higher education this year, you probably heard a lot about that, you know, many colleges are rejecting strong candidates because of various reasons this year. Uh, one very obvious, you know, reason that colleges are rejecting a lot of the students is because they did receive excessive amount of the applications this year. So to make yourself stand out among all of those applicants, pretty much your competitors, right? Every student has to work really hard in high school and learn to utilize their high school resource. So the first question um, for Isabella and Zina here is, we all know high school played a really important role in your journey to college. And um, both uh, guest speakers we have here, Zina and Isabella, they started their freshman year at Carmel. Now looking back, you know, your four years in high school in Carmel, what does Carmel mean to you? Since Carmel plays such an important role in your journey to college. Who wanna go first? 
Isabella, you want to go first? Okay, I can go first. Yeah. So to me, Carmel, and this is something that a lot of students agree on, um, Carmel really is a community more than it is a high school. Um, there's been a lot of really amazing opportunities for me in terms of what classes we've been able to take and be ready, but Carmel is more about the people itself and how they prepare you to become a better person when you leave. Um, this applies to not only your academics and the way that your teachers prepare you, but also just the way that you're formed as a person. And that's something that really stands out when you interact with people preparing to go to college and just other people within your community. And I just feel like I've been surrounded by so many people that care about me and want me to succeed and just love me for who I am. And that's something that's been really special. Thank you, Isabella. Zena? Um, so I definitely agree with you, Isabella. I would also say that Carmel is sort of a place to challenge you and try out different things. Even though you're not sure at first, like starting as a freshman, you don't know exactly where you're going, but it's a good place to like see different classes that you enjoy and then possibly like how that nerd, like how that it, um, involves with your interests outside of just school. What I really like is like the fact that to me, Carmel just provides so much opportunity and like opportunity to learn different things from different people and to just like branch out from what you've already known as a younger student and into like growing up more like into an adult and like nurturing sort of like your intelligence at school. Thank you. So, so school is more than just a classroom, right? We heard from Isabella and Zena. So Carmel is a community, is a home to a lot of students and families. And it's also a classroom where for them to get prepared and get uh, where for students to get to learn the knowledge they need for their future um, academic career, or if you, they wanna you know, get some uh, knowledge for the for job experience, right? So at Carmel, um, I wanna share a few um, school stats here first. At Carmel, we have 100% of the college acceptance rate. Carmel is where they get students prepared for going to college. Everyone will, you know, learn those all, um, all of the core classes and explore their academic interests so they can be ready. And Carmel is also a very rapid school Carmel has won full blue ribbon um, school of excellence awards uh, and provides students with robust educational opportunities across all of the core disciplines, such as engineering, art, media, and business study, and a lot more. We're gonna uh, dig into those uh, different signature programs in a little bit. Carmel is also close to two very well-known top 10 colleges in the USA, University of Chicago, where Zina will be going and Northwestern, well, Isabella uh, is admitted. Uh, it's located in a suburb, a city called Mandeling. Uh, if you talk to any of the students from Carmel, you will hear them talking a lot about Mandeling, Mandeling. This is where the city, uh, where Carmel is. And Mandeling is about 40 minutes to the Chicago International Airport, which provides really, really convenient um, transportation for international students and their families. So with such a strong and reputable program, Carmel attracts many local students who are interested in robotics, engineering, business competition, and a lot more arts, um, social science in general. Uh, these are just some of the quick facts um, I wanna show here again. So studying in the right fit high school provides everyone, every student with a good platform. However, just um, that's the start point for college application, going to a good high school. Many students would believe that college application starts in your senior year or junior year. Um, so here's a question for the two current seniors. When did you start your college preparation? Is that true that, you know, once you go to high school, you can just relax for your freshman and for your sophomore year and just you know work really hard and get started to prepare for your college a little later in junior year and senior year um i would say for preparing for college it's it kind of starts when you're a freshman like you have to be you have to know what type of grades you're going to get in your classes be aware of like how that's going to affect your overall report that you're going to send to your schools in your senior year so you really think about what classes you're taking how far you're going to challenge yourself, especially, I think, 
starting from like sophomore year, it became way more important to me, like how much I was pushing myself in class, like whether or not I would take like an AP class or if I would like move up into more honor classes and stuff like that. Like you really start thinking about it early on, especially with classes and, but like also with activities because you want to get involved with the stuff that you really like. Like you want to be passionate in something that you really enjoy. Like for me, I got involved in youth and government as a freshman because I really liked it. And I knew that if I like in my college applications, if I really talked about youth and government starting from freshman year and like being able to speak about how much it interests me, despite like it just being like for well college applications, but also for like my own enjoyment. I think that is something really important to do. Just like thinking about the things that you really like to do and then starting them early and continuing them for long periods of time is really important. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. Oh, go ahead, Isabella. Yeah, for me too. It starts as a freshman and like Zena, I was able to get involved in my activities in addition to my classes early on. And it's just, you start as a freshman because it's really important to has show those good grades and even to show your colleges what classes you're interested in because if you show that interest in your major it goes a long way towards making sure you can get admitted to that major when you apply to college absolutely thank you so much girls as you guys can hear from Zena and isabella they didn't start to do the work um, until junior year or senior year they actually started in freshman year right so college preparation is not just filling out the forms and writing your essays in the senior year. If you think that's the only thing you will be doing, then you are very late to the game, right? College application starts in your freshman year, starting with creating a course plan for four years. Uh, like Zena mentioned, she um, had to think about what classes she wanna take and how to pu push herself, you know, to take some challenging courses in, in, in sophomore year, right? And then you need to explore your academic interest as early as you can to better understand what you like and what you're good at. Like what Zena and Isabella discovered in their freshman year, Zena is very into using government, Isabella is very into in science study, engineering and robotics. So meanwhile, practicing all of your teamwork and the leadership skills through all those available school clubs and activities while doing, you know, taking challenging course load. After all of the exploration, you will find yourself the best for college. And then it's finally the time for you to put all of the puzzle pieces together in senior year. I'm sure everyone, you know, is doing a lot of heavy lifting in your senior year, actually doing the essay writing, filling out the form, you know, attending the school info session. But all of the preparation in your freshman and sophomore year is equally important. So talking about knowing the classes you want to take, uh, could you please, um, Isabella and Zina, share with us how does Carmel help you plan your full year courses? Um, do you, and also, did you have a clear path you wanted to follow in your freshman year? Were you very sure, like, this is what I want to do when you were ninth grader? Um, um, I can start. Good, um, good. So, yeah, for me, I definitely got support from my college counselor in terms of planning out my four-year courses. Um, what's great is when you're a freshman, there's a lot of space in your schedule, and this lets you try out a lot of different things. Um, your freshman year, it's less important that you have all the right classes than it is that you work really hard in those classes and you keep your, and you start out really strong with like good grades. Um, and for me, I ended up taking an engineering, an introduction to engineering class, which helped me sort of have that clear path after my freshman year, actually. So it wasn't until my sophomore year that I had that exact trajectory, but I definitely started planning out which kinds of classes I wanted to take. And by my sophomore year, I had most of my schedule figured out just in terms of how I would end up getting to where I am now, because I want to be an aerospace engineer. So I was able to take a lot of engineering classes and those STEM classes to prepare me for that. Hey, Isabella. Yeah, I agree. Like you, the college counselor really helps you sort of get an idea of what classes there are to take and then like which ones, like they give you a like, little description and that really helps you think about like how you would feel in that class and sort of give you an idea of what options you have for classes. But I think um, what really helped me for the most part was listening to other students talk about their classes. And that made me like, know like, oh, this class will be like this when I join or or like next year, if I do this class, I can get this out of it. So like talking to older students, especially and hearing their experiences in those classes really helped me. But I think honestly, um, 
doing youth in government, which was like a really big part, is what helped me kind of have an idea of like what my path would be freshman year. I definitely knew that I wanted to do something with political science, but like continuing on like sophomore and like junior year, I got a better of idea um, of going into like something with science and like doing biology. Yeah. Thank you. So you heard from Zina and Isabella, knowing what classes you want to take and the sequence of those classes is very important wherever you go to high school. But here is an interesting fact. U.S. high schools, they do not have the same course curriculum. You might be going to a school that you can see some of those um, art classes, but not engineering classes. Or you might go into a school that you can see all of those classes. So whether a school can offer um, an intro to engineering class or an intro to business class or some of those very advanced biology class really depends on the teacher resources and the school funding. So schools with sufficient teacher resources, you know, teachers who are qualified to teach those different courses or advanced level courses and the fundings can also build in more course options for their students. For example, at Carmel, uh, we provide more than 120 AP and honors courses all together. And we also provide a uh, dual credit courses. I'm sure both Zina and Isabella um, are, are, are taking some of those dual, crest, uh, dual uh, credit courses, which means they're taking the most challenging courses, college level courses in high school. So questions um, for Zina and Isabella, I'm sure some of the attendees might be curious because we're talking about the courses, right? How many AP courses have you guys taken so far, including the senior ones? Um, Isabella, do you have the math right? I think I, after the year, I will have taken 12 AP courses by the end of my senior year. Yeah, that's impressive. Zina? Um, I have taken eight so far. Yeah, also really strong. Anywhere between eight and, you know, 12, I think that's a very strong AP course load. Just for everyone, you know, for your, um, for your reference, if you are thinking about going into the advanced level courses, Carmel will allow you to take um, a very challenging course load, just like Zina and Isabella, to fulfill your academic pursuit, right? So this is something that everyone needs to think about when you go into your college. So with a clear course plan and a career interest in mind, students are encouraged to explore their academic interest in and outside of a classroom, not just in the class, also outside of a classroom. So how does Carmel support your academic interest, Zina and Isabella? Um, I would say one part that like mainly the teachers help me support my academic interest because of the fact that like we discuss a lot and one of the key things that I really like, like one of my favorite classes right now is criminal law. And like the fact that we get to discuss so much just increases my like or love for that topic and like pushes me to like want to learn more about it. And I think that's one of the best parts, like the discussion part, but also like doing like science courses, being able to have access to so many different types of science courses is really helpful for me to know whether or not I really like like the idea of majoring in something that has to do with science. And so I think that's very helpful, like the selection, but also teachers like branching out and reaching out to students and like allowing us to have so many different opportunities to talk about what we really like about our class. I think that really helps. Yeah, and I would say too, another great thing is there are so many different clubs at Carmel and activities that you can pursue outside of the classroom many of which are run by the teachers who get super excited about their classes and their topics. Um, for me personally, being able to be in like the robotics team and other things like that, it's sort of confirmed for me that engineering is something I want to do because I enjoy being able to go there and just work on building a robot after school. And it's shown me that it's something that can be fun and not just boring. And I know for sure that it's what I want to do. Thank you. So you guys heard from Zena and Isabella they both got very well supported for exploring their academic interest. Here's the second question. You know, since you can do so much about what you like, you know, also try out different things because Carmel provided a lot of the opportunities and the different things for you to try. Do you guys write about your academic interest and activity participation in your college essay? Well, that's something 
very interesting that in you know for for you personally to include and also show the colleges you're applying for. Yeah, I did write about like my academic interests, especially when concerning like classes that I really liked, especially when I talked about foreign languages. So I tried to expand about like the fact that I was challenging myself to learn a different language. And also like my activity participation is something that I really focused on in my college essay. I talked a lot about like how that showed me the need for people to be educated, especially with the book drive that I did. So I really talked about that. And I think it helped highlight like my passion for helping people who aren't able to help themselves. But honestly, I think the biggest part of adding like all this information to my college essay was just showing that in general, that I like me as a person and what my interests are and how that relates to what my future career is gonna be in. Yeah, exactly. I um, There's so many supplemental essays in addition to just the common application essay, because many people just think of the common app essay, but especially some of those elite schools, they have multiple additional essays because they really want to get to know you. And I wrote about a bunch of my academic interests there because they ask you, they want to know what do you enjoy doing? And being able to go to some admitted student days, I've actually been able to hear and see that being able to sh demonstrate your interest in your potential major and just some of your classes, it shows that you're really excited about learning and just putting yourself out there and trying new things. And it's a really great way to show colleges that you're ready to be a very successful person when you come to their school. So we all know those academic interests and in your experience are super, super important in order for you to talk about who you are and what are you really passionate about in your college essay, right? But before we do that, everyone needs to really, really try out things and, you know, participate. So like Isabella and Zina, many students at Carmel, they're science lovers, and they got a lot of those courses options and uh, school clubs or uh, different activities that they can be involved. Carmel offers a signature robotics and engineering program through the, uh, the engineering dual credit courses, students learn how to model, improve, and develop engineering products, both in and out of the classroom. Students are also introduced to a variety of the engineering disciplines, including aerospace engineering, uh, civil engineering and architecture, and digital electronics, engineering design and development. Of course, Carmel students are very competitive in robotics competition. Like what Isabella mentioned, um, their team, you know, just won the, the, the state championship again this year, right? And she's on the senior varsity team. Uh, the name is Not Your Average Nerd. Um, and they're the, uh, they, they, they actually, this team won uh, the champion, national championship in 2019, the first technology challenge, World Cup. Because so many students love the robotics and science and engineering in Carmel, so Carmel uh, support the students and they develop uh, two more teams uh, in addition to the senior varsity team. So students get to participate at different level. So regardless which level you are coming in with, you always find a team that you can join. The reason that Como can support its students to actively participate in robotics um, is the strong financial support and the mentorship provided by the school and um, the school community. So Isabella, do you want to maybe share a little bit more about how many robotics labs do we have at Como and how many games competitions, you know, the team usually go and participate every season? Yeah, definitely. So, um couple years back in the 2020 20, and the 2019 2020 school year excuse me we recently had a fully re renovated engineering department at Carmel and one of these things was that we actually got an official robotics lab so the not your average nerds team is headquartered in there and then spread out throughout the other engineering rooms we have the two other teams but the main and robotics lab is open to all of the students who are part of the robotics lab uh, robotics teams and they can use all the heavy machinery the equipment so we have a lot of loud sounds most of the time, but it's a really great experience. We're in there like four days out of five after school working on things. And what we get to do is we normally have at least four competitions in a year, um, depending on how we perform 
perform at that final competition, um, you can make it to the regional level and that's where you would decide whether or not you advance to state. And from there, if you do well enough at state, you can advance to worlds. So there's really a lot of opportunities to compete. And this involves not only building a robot and coding robot, but also working together with people from other teams uh, around your area and really just sort of communicating with them, figuring out how to work together with both of your robots and just getting to be part of a larger community that's really excited about robotics and engineering and science in general. And it's really cool because you get to see these kids from all around the local area and eventually, you know, the state level or the national level, you just realize there's this huge community of people. And when we've been able to succeed the way we have, it's been extremely fulfilling. Thank you, Isabella. These are just some pictures of the robotics labs and the team when they're in action, they're building the robots. And this is one of the lab the students um, use. So in addition to STEM science study, Como has a robust business curriculum program as well, ranging from introductory uh, courses for beginner students to AP and honors, honors courses for advanced students. So the school also has a multifunctional business classroom with small group centered and speaking area. This is their uh, classroom. Doesn't look like a typical classroom, but it is a real classroom in Carmel. Um, students who's take, who are taking the business class usually will meet in this classroom and they have TV um, hand on the wall for students to have small group discussion and to do the presentation. To provide students with more real world experience, Como offers a business incubator program. In the business incubator program, um, the, the lab course, students set up their own companies uh, where they work to solve problems in the real world through creative solutions and innovate, uh, inventions. Students create executable business plans, developing crucial business and communication skills, including marketing, financing, pitching an idea, managing production and the prototyping. At the end of the semester, students will pitch their company idea to the local investors. Uh, they call this pitch night competition. These are some of the pictures from the previous pitch night competition. If they are successful, students receive capital funds and work with those school faculty on uh, securing patents and putting their ideas into the market. That is so exciting for students who ever get to do that. Um, students with successful pitches are also paired with Chicago entrepreneurs and the business experts who will serve as a mentor. So not you get to learn, but you also get to apply and you get to also make the connection with the local, very, very successful local business people at Carmel. So what about students love writing? We talk about students love science, who want to pursue a business study. Don't worry, here at Carmel, students can explore many media courses and the production projects. Both Isabella and Zina, they're active members of the school newspaper, uh, Carmel Crossroads. Do you guys wanna share some of your favorite media classes um, you have taken at Carmel or the you know, activities or pieces you have write, uh, written for uh, the newspaper? Yeah, definitely. Isabella, you um, <laughs> um, when I was a freshman, first. what? Oh, you can go first. Sorry. Oh, okay. Um, I, when I was a freshman, I got to take intro to journalism, which was how I originally got involved in the newspaper. And it was one of my favorite classes that I took actually, because I just had so much fun doing it. Um, we got to work on all sorts of things. We actually first learned how to write a news article. Um, we had to practice interviewing people. We had to edit other people's st stories to figure out, you know, how we could, um, really be conveying information in the right way. And so in that way, it was very interesting for me, but it was also a lot of fun because it opened up all these possibilities for being able to then work for the newspaper and just help represent people at Carmel and tell the different stories of what's going on. Yeah, um, I think what I do now, I do like Carmel Digital Network. And so that's where I get the most, like being able to give news basically um, to like the school. And so what I do mainly is write scripts. And so I have to like find information about different sports, about activities that are going on. Like if we have a play or a musical coming up or if there's a show, 
like different stuff like that. And then I have to make sure that I put them in the script and that whoever's hosting is able to sort of articulate what the announcements are, but also do it in a way that's like enjoyable for them as well as like the viewers of our show. And so that's one thing that I really enjoy doing, learning how to broadcast like the news and also just being able to like kind of be a journalist by like looking through all the different stuff that we have to do for school. Yeah, thank you so much, girls. Um, as Zina and Isabel mentioned, they both um, tried um, or either take a media class or join the school network and get exposure to media and the communication. I believe these are really strong and impressive experience that helped them to improve their communication skills and writing skills. So the real world application for students who are interested in journalism and the communications is so important, right? So Carmel has actually, they actually has a television studio with professional audio and video equipment where I believe Zina, um, you know, will do the news or like editing videos. Um, for most of the students, you know, with interesting journalism and television, they can gain the professional knowledge. knowledge. Students prepare a weekly news and show about the school, sharing updates about a broader community. Um, Carmel also has a professional podcast studio where students can learn about audio production as well. Some examples of the media activities available at Carmel are Carmel Crosswords, which is the school newspaper, uh, Carmel Digital Work, which is the school TV, Carmel Weather Channel, uh, and um, Carmel um, has a lot of Instagram account pages and their Facebook group. These are all the social media um, outreach platform that students can support their teachers to run. The picture at the right upper corner here um, is actually from the Carmel Weather Channel. The student future here is Willie. He should be, I think he's a junior student and an honor roll student. And he runs the Carmel Catholic Weather Channel. He has a passion for weather forecasting and he takes his role as the school's uh, resident uh, meteorologist every very seriously. In addition to live broadcast, he also contributes to the Carmel Digital uh, Network. And that's the online platform we, we mentioned at the school TV. And I know um, Isabella and uh, Zina participate in the Carmel Crosswork. Here's actually one of the article uh, I screenshot and put out here that was written by Zina. Just shows you know how much of how many opportunities students can be involved as long as they want to try. They wanna they wanna um, they wanna get engaged. So if you're not a science person or you does not, or you, you do not want to study business or media, you know, I'm not interested in any of the things we, we just talked about. Do not worry. Como uh, also offers tons of the arts, you know, art classes. Como's fine art program is dedicated to development of young artists, performers, and designers. If you like to sing, you like to dance, you like to make handcraft, you like to design, you like to draw, you always find your favorite classes and a lot of options at Carmel. So uh, uh, Carm each course is taught by professional teachers, a teacher with experience in art and media. Uh, Carmel strongly believes that all of the students can be benefit from arts and humanity courses. Students who are interested in arts will have many opportunities to perform in um, and outside of school, including concerts, uh, dance companies, uh, theater performance, and the student art shows. So um, in addition to these typical programs, um, we also have a lot of the other opportunities at Carmel that students like to try. For example, this is just a, a list of some of the very popular school clubs that are available um, in Carmel. Um, the ones that I colored red, there are also the academic competition that students are actively participating. Whatever you like, uh, Como always try their best to support you. If they don't have anything that might fit your interest, teachers and the faculty are more than happy to go above and beyond to create a new opportunities or connect you to something new just for you to explore, to, to, to reach your personal, your individual academic goal. So you might also be curious, what about sports? We talk a lot about those, you know, classes and the clubs. 
will sports be helping my college application or get me ready for college? Of course, yes. Sports could make you stronger, more independent, better time managing, allow you to be a better team player. Overall, colleges will love candidates for, uh, you know, with these qual uh, qualities. So the picture at the la lower left corner here is actually the girls' uh, basketball team uh, who won the state championship this year. Um, I know that's a very exciting moment for all of the Carmel students and they had a half day off or a whole day off for the whole school to celebrate such a big um, victory. That was the, that's the first state championship the girl basketball team got. You know, that's super, super exciting. Zina, Zina is also a student athlete, as she mentioned, she uh, did track. Um, so Zina, what's your biggest takeaway from doing uh, track? What do you feel like the biggest thing, like the most valuable experience you got? Or do you feel that experience also helped you to get to your dream college? Um, one thing that I really liked about doing track was sort of like the community. I, prior to this, I had never like ran um, before. And so starting track off as a freshman, I was exposed to like meeting new friendships, but also like, um, having um, a mentor to look up to, especially amongst like the un upperclassmen. So it was a really good opportunity for me to learn from other people who are older than me, but also like make friends that way. But a big part that I would say in track is the opportunities for, well, like college scouts, like mainly sports. If you are in the sport, like you'd be able to get people to see how you operate and your passion for that sport. And although I did not have college scouts looking at me. I know many students who are in track who did, like my sister, she's also in track and she was able to, or she is able to like get people to see her passion for running and how like she trains for and conditions for track. So I think that's really important to like show something that you're really interested in, especially in sports. Cause that takes a lot of time to train and build yourself up. So I think that it's a really good opportunity to make new friends, but also focus on yourself and building yourself up in a physical way. Thank you, Zina. So thank you so much, Isabella Zina, sharing your academic experience and the classes you've taken. So the next two questions we have for you guys are, um, do you have a chance to participate in any of these academic competition in and outside of school? I, I know the answer will be yes. So, uh, what's the most memorable academic experience or competition that you've participated at Carmel? Um, my most memorable would be this year in Youth in Government. I was able to be committee chair, so I was able to run committee. And that and in committee, we basically decided which bills would be passed and just controlled like the discussion on the topics of bills. But at the same time, I think the best part of being a committee chair was just being able to sort of control how I wanted to run like the session and how like the time that we were gonna spend on a bill and how much we were gonna dissect the bill to hopefully help that bill be able to pass in the house. And then getting the opportunity to sit in the house and hear my own bill be passed and argue it I think that was the best part because I got to show how I like where I stood on this topic and basically like kind of nerd out a little bit because I would get I got very excited when I could explain different stuff on like how we decided to use this idea for our bill and what that would be and the funding like it was a great experience and so I would say that's extremely memorable. <laughs> Thank you Zena that it truly is. Isabella? Um, for me, it was probably also this year when um, the robotics team got to go to state uh, because it was a really exciting experience for me to be able to advance beyond just the regional level um, for the whole team. We were up early on a bus driving down to um, about 40 minutes away for the competition. And it was just really exciting for me because we got to be with all of these other teams. And throughout the day, we were running competitions. And then we ended up getting picked as one of the teams to advance to in the final tournament round to decide who would be state champions and it was just so exciting to get to see the robot that we'd worked on and built all year long and coded and spent long hours fixing to see it down there doing everything it was supposed to do and working with other teams 
to eventually beat other teams and be successful was just super exciting for us. And just to be part of that community of other people who are there with you, cheering you on, or, you know, even against you, just that competitive atmosphere was like so much fun to be a part of. Thank you, Isabella. So they mentioned a lot, right? Zina, um, Zina is using government uh, competition is super memorable. Isabella loves robotics. We heard her. And the comp robotics competition is obviously super memorable for him, for her. So it's not the academic competition in addition to what Isabella and Zina mentioned, that in national students, they're actively participating at Carmel, including academic challenge, Mayor STEM challenge, which I, I, you know, this is a picture you guys can tell Isabella's in the picture as well, which Isabella participated as well. Um, scholastic bowl, um, first the robotics, uh, first technology challenge, the robotics challenge. A lot of national students, they love to do robotics. Uh, use in government, we also have the national students who are super, super passionate about political science study, more control, and a lot more. So we're waiting for you to come to Carmel to explore what you like to do. So we share quite a lot about getting prepared for the college application in your freshman year and sophomore year. Um, both Zina and Isabella has done a lot of the work um, when they were upper or lower classmen. So when it comes to the actual work, what is the most challenging thing for your college application? I wanna hear from you guys. What do you think that was the most challenging part? Um, I would say the most challenging for me was test prep because of the fact that it takes so much time to study for the test and get ready for the test and also balancing your schoolwork. I was just, it was a bit hard because we were during, it was during like e-learning and I was just like, how can I do my test prep and go to my test prep classes and then also manage going to school online? Yeah, I heard you. So many students might find, you know, they might have the same idea like, yes, Test prep is so hard, so challenging. So how does Carmel support your test prep? I wanna hear from Isabella because I know she has a really good score. Oh, um, so Carmel does a lot actually. So when you're a sophomore, uh, you're given the opportunity to either take a practice ACT or to take the PSAT, which prepares you to take the PSAT as a junior when it counts for National Merit Scholarships. And this is just like the very first step. Carmel literally takes a day out of the school week and you come in and you can take these tests. Um, if you're a junior, you take the PSAT. If you're a senior, you get that as an opportunity for college visit day. But beyond that, Carmel also hosts the ACT every year. So you have the opportunity to take the ACT at least once on Carmel's time. And they also have a ACT preparation class, which you can take as a actual class within your schedule. And sometimes they also offer it after school, depending on what it runs. It basically just depends on how many people are signed up for when, but they completely prepare you. And if you need that extra support, the College and Career Center has tons of extra materials in terms of like where you could find a tutor or, you know, here's some of the best materials to use to help prepare yourself. So Carmel's very invested in making sure that you can be super prepared to take these tests and be successful. Thank you, Isabella. So Carmel is a very, I think it's a very strong ACT school, right? A lot of students, they tend to take ACT at Carmel because Carmel offers ACT test once a year, as Isabella mentioned, and students can just take it um, when they feel they're ready. And this year, the test was scheduled on April 5th. So a bunch of the students just finished taking their ACT test. It also offers the ACT prep class to students. Uh, Isabella shares some details. And with a very strong ACT test prep, each year, a small group of students, they can score 36 in ACT test. What does 36 mean, the ACT test score? So less than 0.5% of the test takers every year, they can score 36, which is the perfect ACT score in the exam. So if you go to Carmel and you are, you know, you, you decide you want to take ACT test, you know, you go through the ACT class offered by Carmel and you, you know, you work, you do your work, you practice, and you score 36. It will be one of those 0.5% of the test takers. So that's a very strong score for college application without, without any doubt. So the next two questions um, 
are actually uh, about uh, the council support. So how does your college council support you during the application stage? Um, did you guys attend any of those college affairs at school this year? Yeah, definitely. Um, I would say that the biggest way your college counselor supports you is they just prepare you for everything that could come your way. So Carmel actually has, you have your academic counselor and they help you plan your classes, you know, answering your questions, help you with your grades, your activities. And in addition to that and helping you with college, we also have Mr. Barger, who is essentially, he does nothing but help us with college applications, college advice, scheduling the college fairs. So we have two different people that we can turn to for help. And throughout the whole process, your counselor will help you figure out what class, what schools you're going to apply to, what you need to submit for those schools. Sometimes they'll even read your essays if you want another set of eyes on them. So there's just so many points of contact to prepare you to make sure you have the support you need to make sure you're doing everything right. Hey, Isabella. Zina, do you want to share any of the college affairs you attend? Yes. So like Isabella said, definitely the college counselors are very helpful, especially in like the college essay process, because you always want a fresh set of eyes to look at your essay and like give them, give the, give you their own opinion. Um, for college affairs, we had a couple at school. We had a lot, um, especially from like prestigious schools, which I did not really expect, but I went to, um, I believe, Northwestern, Vanderbilt, and I know there was like a Notre Dame one that I also attended. And this really helped me get like a better idea of the schools that I was gonna apply to. Because once again, during COVID, it was very hard to go out and like go on college tours. And so to be able to have the opportunity to hear from representatives from that school allowed me to get like an idea of like what I needed to do and what they could provide for me. And I really enjoyed that. Thank you. So just like Isabella and Zena said, Every common student will be well supported for their college application because we have a very strong counseling department at Carmel. Um, these are a list of the student, uh, school counselors who work with our students. You can, as a student, uh, schedule individual meeting with your co college counselor or attend workshops offered by Carmel. Also, Carmel invites uh, many college admissions representatives to our campus so you can get to meet them without traveling out of the state. So like um, a lot of the seniors and like what Zina and Isabel mentioned, it is very important to make the connection and put yourself out. So the college actually know you're interested. They know you want to apply to the school. So once you are junior and the seniors, there will be a lot of those college application related opportunities for, for students to, to explore. So the next two questions are about the choosing college. Um, I know every student will apply to more than one college, right? Um, some of the students will apply up to like eight or 10 college or as many as they can. So you might be curious, how do students usually in the USA com compose their school list? Um, Isabel and Zena, could you share your experience? How did you come up with your school list that you want to apply for? Um. I know there's like the urge to apply to like the really prestigious schools, but I would say apply to the school that you feel like you're going to be the best fit. And what I did mainly was look at the website and also look at the different clubs that they had. One thing about UChicago that really interested me when I was really focused on getting in was just looking through the website and looking at the clubs that they had and the opportunities, especially organizations that would focus on um, the diverse student body, like bring student body of diverse colors together and like show the school also like what the cultures were about. And that really interested me a lot and helped me like sort of get a better idea about what U Chicago was about. But for other schools as well, looking at once again, the website and trying to go on the college tours and using the college fairs that we had really helped me get a better idea of the school. And that told me what schools would be my top schools that I would go after and focus really hard on. And then what schools I would be like my target. And then like, of course, the really reach schools. So that's basically how I tried to make my college list. Thank you. Yeah, it's a lot of the same way. And I have to agree with Zina when she says to look on the website because it's a really great way to see not only what the school offers, but also just to sort of see like a vibe check on what the school is like because their website can tell you a lot about what their culture 
at the school itself is like and to figure out if it's a place that you feel like you would belong there or maybe you feel a little uncomfortable and you can tell that that's a school that you may not be happiest at. And also Carmel, like one of the counselors, the big thing is figuring out like your foundation schools, your target schools, your reach schools, that's sort of what we call them. But they do, but it's great because then you know that you have places where you can hopefully maybe get some money from. You have some schools that are right in that spot for where you're at with your grades and your activities and your um, test scores. And there's those schools that just because of the nature of how hard they are to get in, it's a push for everybody. But when you know that there's one of the two places like that, you can really just work really hard and figure out what you need to do to focus on making sure you can get admission to those schools. Yeah, thank you girls. So what matters most for you when looking for the best fit school? Seems everyone does a lot of research and try to understand um, school courses, you know, clubs, activities, school vibes. What do you think more matters the most for you? I think what was very important to me was whether or not I had space to continue learning a lot. Like I wanted to know how much I could learn at U Chicago. Like, could I double major? Could I double major and minor? Which you can. And I wanted to see how I could do that. And if I could just like have the space to do so much things, but that were like opposites of each other. Cause like political science and biology, very different from each other. But the fact that I had the space to be able to do that was something that I was looking for. Like, how can I be not really indecisive, but like something that would call to my interests, but also help me get a way better idea of which one I would like, like to, well, I guess like go into a career in the most. So like biology and political science, doing those two, seeing which one out of, at the end of the day when I graduate, whether or not I'll apply to pre-law or pre-med, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, and for me, it's sort of the same way. I have a lot of interests in from coming in from high school, but I really knew that I wanted to do aerospace engineering, at least right now. So I looked for schools that had really strong engineering backgrounds, but I also wanted to make sure I had the space that if I got there and even though I thought I had known what I wanted to do, I realized that it maybe wasn't for me. There was still plenty of different things that I could do and I have lots of opportunities still um, while being able to still be in like a strong environment with STEM and liberal arts and all these different possibilities. So even though one of the places I ended up getting a, um, accepted into is a tech school, they still have um, a decent sized humanities department. And I really liked that because I know that I can continue like Xena to study different things at the same time. And I know that I wouldn't be limiting myself based on where I was going. Yep, thank you girls. I mean, obviously we have to look into a lot of different factors. When we decide, uh, you know, when we look at schools, which one will be the best fit. So what Zena and Isabella should wanna encourage everyone to think about, not just the ranking, when we look at college, it's not just all about ranking, right? You have to look at the location, campus size, education resource, whether it will allow you to double major or take a minor major, and also a lot more, the student support, the student activities, the student life, campus life in general. So the last two questions we have is, what factor do you think help you get into your dream college? And what are some of the tips you want to share with all of the attendees here today? Um, I would say one of the biggest factors would be this idea that, especially at Carmel, that everyone has the opportunity to lead. Just, I was, I started off very quiet as a freshman. And the fact that I was able to do so many activities that allowed me to lead like retreats, for example, or like just branching out and speaking to different people really helped me know that like, like what I wanted to do, but also for like applying, like to get into my New Chicago, it showed that like I was very passionate about like speaking up for other people. And that I really wanted to like have a career that I could lead people in a way that really mattered and, and at least did some sort of change, even if it's not big, but like that was something that I thought helped me get into New Chicago, just my excitement to lead and do more and become something way bigger than what I am now. Thank you, Zena. 
Yeah, I, I agree with Zena about the point about leadership specifically. Um, just there's so many different opportunities outside and inside of the classroom to become a leader that when you find something you're passionate about, um, for me, especially finding a lot of the STEM opportunities, when I was able to find those and then grow into those leadership roles by the time I was a junior or a senior, I think being able to show your passion in a specific subject to the point that you're leading an entire group of people in it by the time you're a senior. I think that's something that really stands out to people in the college admissions process because they see that you are motivated in the subjects that you're interested in to the point that you're sharing with other people and you're doing so in a way that is at a high enough level and of a high enough quality that you've been entrusted with this leadership role by your peers and by your teachers. And I think that shows a lot of maturity that prepares people to get into your dream school. Thank you, girls. Um, so thank you so much for sharing these great insights. Each year we have these motivated and talented intelligent young students at Carmel who got into their dream school are either top 10 on Ivy League school or top 30 schools. I screenshot some of their college decisions on this slide. Where these seniors, you know, where do they go in the past three years? If you are curious, feel free to follow the school Instagram account and figure out more. Where are those, you know, the current seniors they're going? Because they are not 100% set on their college decision. At the moment, some of the current seniors are still deciding which school they want to go because they have multiple strong offers at hand. So I know we start a little late. Um, if anyone from attendee want to ask a question, we might be able uh, to take one or two questions. Zina and Isabella, would that be okay if we extend um, the event maybe for five minutes? Yeah. yeah, thank you. Anyone who want to ask questions, feel free to type in the chat box. If you are very curious about like, hey, I want to know a specific thing, either Zina or Isabella did, or like something that you feel like I'm also interested, you know, that happened to be what Isabella and Zina did before, I want to ask for more, um, you know, information, or I want to learn more about that particular opportunity at Carmel, feel free to send us the question. Even if it's something we didn't do, we know way too much about yeah. Carmel, it can probably <laughs> answer your question anyways. Yeah. True. So, oh, I, I, I saw a question popping. All right, here's a question from our attendee. Which is the most attractive thing in your life at Carmel? What do you think like make you like look super good, fancy things you did maybe in Carmel? Ooh, a lot too many. <laughs> that's a that's a good question. Yeah. Um, I guess I'll ask like a follow up question. Um, do they mean like something that we've done in our careers, or just something that's like good looking at Carmel? Because there's some really awesome spots at Carmel, or is it something from our careers? Um, I I, I know this is a question from um someone whose name is Ivy. Ivy, could you maybe? specify a little bit what do you mean like a um, most attractive thing anything academics sports clubs <laughs> oh man um i would say at carmel one thing that i really think is amazing is the fine arts department i think that's very um it's a very big community there's so many opportunities to do things like dance and like art as well as like singing um one thing that i do in fine arts is cadence which is like show choir where we sing and dance and i would say that's like the combination of well being in co regular choir and then also dance and so like coming together and doing that and like getting like one thing that's really cool about it is getting students who are normally like sports who do sports and like having them in show choir it's just it's a lot of fun because we're singing and we're dancing and you just learn a lot about different students because we're just coming together and performing and it's really fun. Wow. I didn't know that. That's super cool. You can dance and sing at the same time. 
Yeah, um, I'd say for me, this isn't something we really talked about, but one of the things that I also really love about Carmel is campus ministry. Um, so Carmel mm -hmm. is in fact a Catholic school, um, but we're well, like they have a huge like diversity and resource center for students of all different backgrounds. But what I really love about it is it's definitely a unifying factor within the school. Like we'll all have all school mass together. And you know, when they do the closing song, I send you out, everybody sings and we clap along and it's really fun, but just, it's this really strong unifying factor in the school. And it's really great when you see students, like I have so many friends who help like distribute communion or they help hands, you know, do hand sanitizer or bring out the stations of the cross tomorrow. And it's just really amazing when we see the whole school come together and celebrate um, something really beautiful and unite, even if we're from different, as different backgrounds in our communities. Yes, I totally agree. One Excuse big me. part of Carmel are the mass. Like I send you out best part. Like we're just all together and happy and joyous to be celebrating. Even if you're not like completely religious, just the idea that you're celebrating something that is higher and like you're with your classmates. It's very exciting. Good point. <laughs> yeah, I heard you guys. That's so awesome. So we have another question from the uh, attendee. Um, so that's about uh, meeting with the college rep from um, all of those college fairs um, mm -hmm. that were held at Carmel. So um, do you or do they require you guys or students uh, to prepare anything before you go to meet with the college reps? Or do you get to meet one on one? Um, no, you don't have to prepare really for anything. You just go there with other students and they sort of give you like a presentation about the school and then you get the opportunity to ask them. And it's mainly just answering a lot of your really big important questions. And that's very helpful for everybody that's in the room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what's great is, I mean, the last year has been kind of crazy. We've had a lot of Zoom meetings because of the way that COVID has limited things, but there's been a lot of people coming back in in person now. And what's great is when they're in person, even if, you know, during the big presentation, you may be scared to ask a question, but afterwards it's definitely possible to just walk right up to them and have a personal conversation with them. You literally just sign up like within 24 hours before the meeting, you get excused from your class during that time period. And you can take as much time as you need to talk with them and develop that really personal connection that can sometimes be the difference between getting in and not getting in. Thank you, girls. So we have uh, one more question. Um, this is going to be the last question we have for you guys. So do you have any of the international students as friends? Um, how could they involve in the community if you observe any of your friends who, um, you know, become a Carmel community member and who is very active, you know, participating? Um, is that very easy? Like how welcome, you know, the community is. Mm -hmm. um, is there anyone or like maybe a mentor student or like um, an older student, maybe from the upper class can help the, the new or the younger international student to uh, immerse mm -hmm. into the community? Um, I would say, I know that there's a day that we have or, or like a week dedicated to like clubs and activities. And honestly, it's very easy to just go up to like each table and like sign up because people want like the clubs need people to join and so they're very open to whoever signs up and that's like I think the easiest way to get started just like just by like it's during the lunch period so you're able to have the opportunity to go and see the different clubs and they also like give you sort of like little like pamphlets about their clubs so if you're ever interested you can look at it and it's really easy honestly like it's the perfect week for that and it's just so many diverse clubs that you can apply or sign up yes. for and i can personally attest to the fact that there are super successful international students that like are able to be involved on my robotics team alone we have a student from brazil and a student from vietnam um they're both coders um pedro built an app that we actually used to score stuff with our robot this year. You can literally find it on the app store. Um, within my Femin STEM club, we had lots of girls from the foreign exchange program come and help us out. We they volunteered at our um, outreach event a couple of week a uh, couple weeks ago on a Saturday, which was great. Um, I've had friends on the Scholastic Bowl team. I know there are people who've been involved in youth and government. Um, so really, it's super easy to get involved and everyone is happy to have you. So you definitely can do it. And there's senior students who will help you along the way. Thank you, girls. Thank you so much, Isabella and Zina, again, for being with us today. 
and a big, big congratulations on your college offers. We wish you the best for your college journey, wherever you will be. I know Isabella is still deciding. Um, Zina is committed to University of Chicago, you know, very close to her home. So it's easy to see mom and dad over the weekend and your sister. <laughs> Isabella might head to California, which will be a lot far from Chicago, her home. But I believe that's a really, you know, that's really a good place, a strong place for her to be in. She loves science. Thank you all the attendees for joining us today. If you do have questions, please feel free to reach out to our recruitment manager in your area. We would love to stay in touch. Thank you and have a good one, everyone. Thank you.